I'm kind of surprised more business owners don't podcast. I mean, bang for buck, podcasting delivers such amazing returns. Well, today's guest is involved in a small solar energy business and podcasting has been instrumental to its success. Love that. Let's go and find out how in episode 458 of the award-winning Small Business Big Marketing Show. Thanks to American Express. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show, where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead, now here's your host, Mr. Tim Reed. And welcome back to your weekly dose of marketing malarkey. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. you infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner, ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. And today's 458th episode is made possible thanks to American Express, whose business card programs can help you optimize your cash flow as well as provide some outstanding choices of rewards. All you need to do is Google Amex Business to find out how they can do that. Big show today. We catch up with solar energy industry opinion leader, aficionado, Nigel Morris. And why is he an opinion leader, I hear you ask? Because he's nailing podcasting. That's why. We're going to go deep, deep into that. LA-based concierge to the stars, Steve Sims, shares another simple way you can wow those precious clients of yours. And I've got some pretty exciting news on upcoming guests, including the founder of a business I absolutely love using. I'm going to be a bit of a fanboy during that interview, I'm guessing. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Oh, wow. 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 Oh, yes, in deedly doodly, you know what that means. It's time for another business building tip to wow those precious, precious clients of yours. Thanks to our great mates at American Express, whose business card programs also make the smart business owner go wow. As usual, all the way from California, IA, we are joined by Steve Sims, speaker, best selling author of Blue Fishing, The Art of Making Things Happen, an incredibly tr- attractive individual. Simsy, How can we wow our beautiful clients this week? Well, I'm glad you mentioned the last part. My (laughs) my stunningly good looks have been overlooked many times, uh, but thank you for bringing that up. Today, we're going to focus on the value of a relationship. Bottom line of it is, if there is no value in a relationship, you don't have a relationship. So the focus should always be on, okay, what am I bringing to the table? Doesn't always have to be money needs to be education, it needs to be humor, it needs to be engagement, whatever it is, ask yourself what you bring to a relationship. And then in the old saying, you are the five people you hang around with, look at those people and ask yourself, what do they bring to my relationship? And bottom line of it is, if they're sapping your energy, if they're sapping your bar tabs, if they're sapping your your education and not putting anything in the pot, then that's a one-sided relationship, and that doesn't work for anybody. It's a short-lived situation. So focus on what value is in a relationship that you put out to others and what value you get in. It's time to be selfish with the value of your relationship. Got an example of that in your business where you felt you've built a really great relationship, and as a result, you know the effort you put into the relationship with others paid you back in spades? Uh, I've, they always say that experience comes two seconds after you needed it most. There's been a lot of those relationships I've had, and sadly, most of them are in like the Hollywood area, where you think, this is going to open up doors for me. This is going to help. Yes, I will help you with your project. I will help you plan your event. I will help you get access. And you put all Hmm. of your assets into the relationship, and you find out that it's empty on the other end, and they're not reciprocating. They're not bringing it back. So I've learned some of those lessons and probably the most scary of those lessons from relationships that I fed too heavy, and there was no value in it. But there's been other relationships, and this is usually the key, that have been so easy to have. Like me and you, you know, Mm -hmm. we just get on. 
and we get to chat, we get to hang out, and the little tips that we cross between each other educate us and allow us to grow and talk about a different perspective. If mm. it's an easy relationship to have that leaves you smiling, refreshed, and thoughtful, that's a valuable one. And I'm, I'm thankful to say I've got many of those in my Rolodex now, way more than the ones I used to have. You've still got a Rolodex? <laughs> yeah, I've still got the little plastic <laughs> flippy thing on my desk. It's there for display purposes only. Jeez, mate, I introduced you as Steve Sims from the City of Angels or California AA. I actually should have introduced Steve Sims from 1983. But <laughs> <laughs> from Johnson Abbey. Listen, mate, I'll let you hop back in your time machine. There you go, team. Thanks to American Express. That's another killer way to make your precious clients go wow. To find out how Amex can add a little wow to your business, no matter what decade it's in, Google Amex Business after the show. Thanks, Steve. Goodbye. Righto, time to get inspired by today's special guest, who I happen to meet on a road show I'm currently speaking on for a business called Supply Partners. And a big thanks to Liam Ricketts for introducing me to Nigel Morris who is the business manager at Solar Analytics, a software business that helps you monitor your solar panels efficiently. Now, that in itself is not that exciting, unless you're writing the, you know, solar panels and all that type of stuff. Where it does get exciting is that Nigel is the co-host of a solar energy podcast called Solar Insiders that has been a major contributor to 10 times growth in that business that he works for. Now, If you're a long-time listener, you'll know my thoughts around podcasting for small business. It's a highly effective medium, you know that, that when you do it well, can build your business and personal brand at a fraction of the cost you may be spending on other marketing channels. Not to mention, podcasting's just a whole lot of fun. I want more of you doing it. So instead of me rattling on about that ad infinitum, let's hear from someone else involved in a small business just like you who's smashing podcasting out of the park. I started off by asking Nigel to explain exactly what the solar analytics business does. And a little tip here, he nails his elevator pitch beautifully. Sure. What we do is we help people save more money by optimizing their solar and understanding how they use energy in the home. Pretty much pretty much that's it in a nutshell. Um, we do it through the installation of a little device that allows them to measure energy in the home and then we apply a whole bunch of really nerdy uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and run all sorts of clever algorithms over that information that we collect and then display it in a really simple way on any device, a phone, an app, a, a computer, anything they want to be able to understand, to demystify how they're using energy and to make sure their solar is working as well as it possibly can. You know, um, you have done clearly a lot of work on how to pitch your business because if you and I'm not going to because I want to talk podcasting I want to to nerd out about (laughs) podcasting but if you were to dissect and I would encourage listeners to dissect what you just said the way you've pitched your business uh, is very clear uh, and precise so well done to you you're clearly a, a marketing guy from way back the oh, the elevator pitch is always is always hard, and it is hard. Um, it's very hard. And our business is not necessarily a simple business, but everyone wants to save money on energy. So you know, if you keep it keep it focused on the core of that, then yes. we get close. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, identify the problem, hit them between the eyes with with an elegant solution, and you did that beautifully. Um, in regards Thanks. to solar analytics, Nige, how, how were you marketing it prior to landing on podcasting? Yeah, so pretty much like most businesses, um, and we've we've mucked around with you know w- how we're trying to get to the market a bit as we've evolved the business. We're still in you know technically in startup mode, but like most businesses, it started out with um, with uh, web advertising um, and and a pretty detailed website. Trying to tell stories was something that we started very very early on. So we've got a pretty extensive blog um, uh, into the traditional media. So trying to find tra- traditional sort of PR opportunities to tell the story um and um and then you know the regular sort of print advertising mm-hmm. expos trade shows those types of things tell me about stories love it when i hear a business owner talk about stories <laughs> what do you mean you're blogging i notice you're blogging sort of monthly are you finding interesting stories to support a point that you want to blog about is that what you mean 
That is absolutely what we mean. Um, we, we've got a network of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of installers and, and, and dealers of our product around the country who we who we deal with. And we also have a direct relationship with the end users of our product because they subscribe to our service. So we we can we can extract stories. Um, in fact, we get stories thrown at us almost every day from end users or from installers who go, oh, wow, you know, I was... I was wanting to find the the the, um, the answer to this question that I had, and I stumbled across the answer in your app. Thanks so much. Or I uh, I had a call from a customer who I installed Solar for, and um, I jumped on the app, and I was able to analyze it remotely and help them diagnose this problem. And so they get so excited about these stories and so passionate because they realize how we can help them that they often come to us. And then what we yes. do is use in-house experts who are who are good at writing. To to, um, uh, to turn that into a story that we can then share with other customers so that we can give them examples of, of what we can do and how we can do it. So two things there. You have got a radar on uh, looking for stories because, I mean, so many business owners, we, we're told stories all the time from, mm-hmm. from, from customers, from prospects, from suppliers, and I'm guessing most of the time they just sort of float over our heads and we don't acknowledge them as potential sources of great content. So oh, you, they're gold. They are they're, gold. They're absolutely gold, Tim. Yes. You know, and especially in our, we're in a fairly early emerging part of the market too. So we're pushing, we're pushing a new solution that people aren't necessarily used to. So we really have to focus on the story. I mean, any business can do this. Mm. Any business can go to stories, and I'm a massive fan of them. And we'll we'll talk about that later, I'm sure. But love it. Of in, in an emerging industry where, or where you're developing, um, um, uh, where, where you want to educate customers about something that they may not understand well, it's all about stories. If you can make it real for someone and if you can explain to someone in a, in a language and in a context and just one bite size, here's how we solve this problem for this person, look at this real life story. It resonates with people, Love and um, so yeah, I, I'm a massive fan. So just uh, understanding how you then bring them to life. You said you've got in-house experts. Do you have an in-house copywriter, or who do you hand these stories? Like? Who do you tap on the shoulder and go, "Hey, listen, customers just told me this. Can you turn it into a blog post?" Yeah, look, we, we've actually got a we've got a, a mix of people in house. So we do it in several ways. One is some of it comes from our sort of techie engineering kind of guys, where they go or girls, and and they go, hey, we heard about this, and I've and I've kind of written something up. Can you wordsmith that? And then we've got two. We've got a marketing person who's a who's a very experienced blogger uh, who is end user focused. So they're B to C focused, mm-hmm. and so they, they she really understands how to talk to end users and then we've also got a communications and marketing manager who sits in our b2b team so she is an expert in Love how it. to write in a language that works for installers again you know great lesson to share that content creation around us as long as you can hold the voice of the brand and the tonality of the brand you're sharing the creations content around which again holds so many business owners back because you know if, if it's a smaller business they're like oh I can't do all this I can't do it all on my own yeah that's that's right Tim and and in fact you know in a previous life that was one of the things that I did was helped connect people to people who to other people uh, con- consultants um, people in the industry who could write and who could um, interpret a story in the right way and so there are lots of opportunities and, and indeed this is one of the things I used to do in a past life was actually help curate that content for people. So come to me with a story, I'll turn it into something that's readable or manageable and we'll disseminate that for you. So there's lots of ways that businesses Love can it. do it, even if they don't have the in-house um, expertise. Nigel, why did you choose then podcasting? You've gone through all these different marketing communications channels and about a year or so ago, you land on podcasting. How'd that come about? We did. Well, the short version is that, you know, I had a relationship with um, a guy called Giles Parkinson, who's a very, very experienced journalist through the blogging. And we often share our blogs with other bloggers and other channels. And Giles has got a great channel um, uh, specific to our industry. And Giles was was thinking and, 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 and experimenting with podcasting as just another means to get out there, to get the messages out. And you know, when you do blogging, uh, you know, a, a good blog is a fair bit of work. There's uh, there's a fair bit of time involved in it. And in chatting with Giles, we, we sort of realized, wow, if we could condense, you know, what would be many hours of work of writing four or five different blogs into a bite-sized 20-minute, 20 25-minute podcast once every couple of weeks, 
be like a summary of everything for everyone that speaks to what every one of us struggles with these days and that is where do we get the time to get this information right we've got information coming at us in so many different ways so i put the idea to giles and said giles i reckon there's an opportunity here to talk specifically about some of these issues uh, in the industry that we're facing, um, I'd like to sponsor that as Solar Analytics so that we've got a conduit out into the market. Clever. But let's keep it open. Let's let's not talk about Solar Analytics. Let's talk about industry issues and we can weave in some of the good stuff about our business. Genius. That is genius. And Giles has gone, hell yeah. <laughs> Giles, <laughs> luckily Giles and I have got a great relationship and uh, he he was looking for more stories. He was looking for more ways to get messages and communication out through the channels and diversity is key, right? Yes. Some people love a story that they can sit down and read uh, for, for, for 15 or 20 minutes. Others are on the bus or the train or the car and just want a nice 15, 20 minute story. And in fact, it's the most common, one of the most common stories we hear from listeners and we've got thousands of listeners now now uh is you know i i got one literally just yesterday where someone said geez i just had a four hour drive and i've just gone through you know 15 or 20 episodes of your podcast what a wonderful way to kill the time oh buddy i i love getting those emails uh you know great? And, and i look for language like you know i love your podcast it's addictive or i you know i can't stop listening and it's wonderful when you get that kind of stuff because sometimes you hit the mic and you're wondering is there anyone out there <laughs> were you a podcast every time, <laughs> every, every time like like right now? <laughs> were, were you a podcast fan, Nigel, before starting your own? Look, a, a little bit. Um, podcasting and, and listening to podcasts is, as you know, Tim, it's, it's a relatively new thing. Um, oh, not really. You know, Jeez, this is you're on a ten year old show, champion. <laughs> beg your pun when I say that I, I mean if you go back three or four years and you ask you ask ten people at a barbecue what podcast do you listen to yes. you know probably a proportion of them would go what's a podcast yeah, correct. right a majority but it's really taken off in the last couple of years in, in, from sitting on the outside and not being anywhere near as experienced as you um, so yeah I listen to a bunch um, I don't get a heap of time for it um, but I do what I really love about it especially if you're on the on the right thing, you can get a mix of entertainment, you can get a mix of education, you can get a mix of, of business info. There's so many different topics and it's, it's just a wonderful medium yeah. and it works really well these days. It's easy, it's simple, it's fast. One, and I know the answer to this, but I have to ask questions that I think my listeners are thinking. Um, you operate in the solar power industry. You're creating a show for, it sounds like it's both B2B and B2C, so end user mm. as well as industry. That's right. Now, end user, that's a very broad, that's anyone who could potentially put solar panels into their home or business. But as an industry, and you and I are doing a road show at the moment around solar panel, uh, for the solar panel industry, um, a lot mm. of those blokes in the audience, I wouldn't have thought prior to your show coming out, a sol- uh, podcaster, podcasting listeners. So no, I, th- I, think, I think you're right. So how did you overcome that? Because it would have been very easy for you and Niles to go, you know, for our point of view, it's a great way to kind of pull all this content that we're getting every week into a, in a, into a quick 25-minute soundbite. Yep. But, geez, all these blokes installing solar panels in homes and businesses, they don't listen to podcasts. How did you break through that kind of limiting belief? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. And, and, and I guess what we did was we leveraged all or every channel that we had available to us our newsletter to our customers our facebook page to our customers um, we've got a group page for our installers that's very very targeted and then also going through joel's platform and his website he can reach his um, subscribers and consumers through his channels as well. Um, so we used every and, and and just every week. It's it's just another little, very very yes. simple, very very economic. Put in put a, a link on your on your Facebook page that says, "Hey, latest podcast is up. Here's the topics we covered this week." And as that's as we've done that, we've started to build the brand of the podcast, and we've also started to get people to just give it a go, give it a try, and find a way. You know, you could literally be listening to our podcast with your headphones in while you're bolting roof um, mounting systems to to the roof before you install the solar or driving to a job. Nigel, is that OH&S friendly, mate? 
uh, can you be listening to a sh- can you have the headphones on when you're smashing in a solar panel and a roof on the third story? S- safety's <laughs> critical, but there's a lot of there's a lot of tedium, uh, especially in the bigger jobs or, or the large projects where guys are just handling you know literally tens of thousands of panels. There's just lots of little opportunities where they're just chunking through their day, you know, yeah, you got it. and we can just fill those gaps for them. Hey, I'm guessing your business has many, many needs. Maybe you need extended cash flow to bring to life that genius marketing idea that you've been sitting on for way too long. Or maybe you'd love a rewards points program that had you flying at the pointy end of the plane on the trip of a lifetime. Maybe you're just like a business tool that made running that beautiful business of yours just that little bit easier. Well, here's what I'd do. After the show, check out American Express's range of business cards designed specifically to help small businesses like yours. Simply Google Amex Business to find out more. Now, back to the interview. We're chatting with Nigel Morris, who is uh, one of the uh, business guys at Solar Analytics. He's also the host of the Solar Insiders podcast, and he's using podcasting to grow his business into a big business, which I love. Now, Nige, I want to start to geek out on the whole podcasting. I want, I want to dissect exactly how you put a show together, all aspects of it. But I want to cut to the end, and I want you to share with our listeners what podcasting's done for your business. Because if we understand that, mm. then dissecting the podcast is going to be a whole lot more interesting to the business owner who's thinking of doing it. So let's yeah. go through it. Uh, more customers? Well, you know, answering your, your, your question about what, what it's done for us, the really interesting thing is that what we needed to do in this business, so I came in a couple of years ago, and one of the things that we really needed to do was build cred- credibility. We needed to prove predominantly to our industry, uh, to our dealers or to our potential dealers, we needed to prove that we had credibility as a business, and we also needed to demonstrate um, the credibility and the opportunities for us to for them to use our product and so what podcasting has allowed us to do is by keeping the topics broad by talking about the industry in general and batting being advocates for solar energy in general we've positioned ourselves as advocates for them okay and 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 that was part of what we'd been doing before but this this gave us a literally a mic and a mouthpiece to do that and so we used it to build trust with them and to build credibility and then as i said before we weaved in the stories about how our uh, business how our product um helps deliver that credibility for them for their end users Mm -hmm. okay tick opinion leader industry advocate you've developed trust amongst your your prospects and your customers uh Media. I'm, I want. I'm trying to. I want you to tell me everything because I've got this. I've written a book called the Boomerang Effect, right? And the Boomerang, yep. boomerang Effect is very simple. The, pre, it, the premise is, the more helpful you are in your marketing, the more it's going to return multiples. Okay, so your marketing, yep. your podcasting is incredibly helpful, uh, and I want to understand what those multiples are. So reputation. I guess I'm guessing, and I've seen you. Uh, at the conference that we were at last week, you you know people know who you are, so your personal brand is on the rise within your niche. Correct. Come on, Correct. you're Absolutely. being bloody humble here, mate. I want you to just you know, I want you to go, <laughs> Timbo. I'm glad you asked me what podcasting did for my business. It's bloody grown it unbelievably. Um, so you are now speaking. I, yeah, I'm I'm a regular on the speaker circuit, and, and you know, coming right down to it, Timbo, you know, 26 years in solar for me, and I love this business. Yes. I love the people in the business, and we've watched the industry go through ups and downs. We have challenges, we have shonks, we have good people, we have bad people, we have good policy, we have bad policy, and so commentating on that, being a voice for for um, the industry is something I absolutely love. I've been lucky enough to get a couple of awards for advocacy nice. and all those kinds of things. So I have I have built a bit of a personal brand and a, and a bit of a passion or, or around a passion for trying to keep the industry on track, delivering high quality solutions, right. delivering clever marketing, all those types of things. And uh, so yeah, I'm right I'm, I'm definitely leveraging um, the brand that I built up, um, doing that kind of work in the past and delivering that through the through the podcast. Your website traffic, your Google rankings increasing thanks to podcasting. They are look I, I think. 
it's early days for us. We're only a year in, yes. um, and we're still finding our feet in exactly what the best content is, and how to produce, and how frequently, and how long they should be. So I think we've still got some some good learnings to come. But there is no doubt at all that we are driving more traffic to the places that we want it to, and we use it as a lever, if you like, to try and you know bring a topic to the fore, or, or, or alert people's attention to something new that's coming, or or find an example of how our product can be used that that others don't. And, and so, you know, our growth, um, you know, we're, we, we had 10x growth in the last last 12 months, 18 months or so. So our growth is astronomical. And certainly the podcast is playing a really, really key role in that. And, and, and you know, may I say, incredibly good value way to do that compared to, you know, spending hundreds <laughs> of thousands of dollars on, on print media or yellow pages or any of the old fashioned ways of doing it. Incredible, isn't it? Like v- cost versus return on podcasting. I mean, is there better? You know, we'll, again, we're going to dissect it, so we'll go through what it does cost and, and uh, the, the the time and resources it takes, and yeah. it's it's surprisingly small. Um, just to finish off, Nige, I'm guessing you're getting um you're getting media coverage. You you were even um quoted in what's that show on the ABC that um, Media Watch Media Watch media mate Watch. yeah that's amazing. So for overseas listeners, that's a show that kind of keeps the media accountable you want to be mentioned on media watch in a positive light not a negative light <laughs> that's I'm, right I'm you don't want to get a bad rap <laughs> no but we got a good rap they, they ran a story uh recently uh about some of the claims that were being being made in the media about solar energy and 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 about the energy industry and um there was a lot of debate about that and in classic media watch style they they sort of tore a lot of those claims apart and and used us as evidence so the conversation that we were having uh, or had had in a previous podcast they stumbled across it and they said here's an example of um, some industry advocates some industry people challenging these claims and here's what they said and we got a little audio snip and a, and a, and a use of our logo which for us we, we didn't know that was going to happen we just happened to see it and went oh my gosh that's <laughs> that's exactly what you want that is and that's organic. That's that just happened organically. So clearly, whoever our audience is is reaching. It's cutting through for us, and that's the beautiful thing about podcasting, compared to trying to do a mailbox drop or or or, or um, you know run a multi million dollar TV campaign. Podcasting and and, and getting getting lots of detailed content out into the world wide web uh, it just has this kind of wicking effect and it can find its way through to all sorts of places that you would never anticipate like Media Watch for us. Totally agree. Just the last bit on what podcasting's done, um, you, uh, you've got sponsors. I mean, Solar Analytics is a sponsor of the Solar Insiders podcast. Um, yep. You have other third party p- uh, businesses that are paying to be on your show. We do. Um, so we've been lucky that we've had um, we've had one main sponsor that just jumped straight on very very early and said, "I want to sponsor this every two weeks." It works wow. for me to have a little bit of coverage every couple of weeks, and I don't have to contribute. I can just get involved around the edges and you know feed you a little bit of info. So he sees it as a conduit as well, and the way that he gets access to that is is by sponsoring. And then we also from time to time have have other sponsors who jump on board and might sponsor a particular episode or or, or what. Not, but the way that we've been able to pay for the production of it is um, by having an external sponsor and, if you like, an internal sponsor in me because we contribute a small amount to each each episode to keep the wheels turning and pay for the production costs. So here you are. You are building a personal brand. You are building the Solar Analytics brand and you are actually – you, uh, I'm going to guess you cash flow positive because now you've got third party sponsors paying for the marketing of your brand. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's <laughs> not bad, really. Oh, it's not bad. This is excellent. Now, let's get all podcast nerdy, Nigel. So, from day one, how did, you, how did you decide what to podcast about? Because your show is on your iTunes description, it says it's about the ins and outs of the solar industry and what it means for consumers. Yep. My, in my experience, listening to some some podcasts that I just see come along and start for the first time to listening to talking to business owners who want a podcast they're like but what would we podcast about and Mm. you know people get stuck on that how did you decide what your show was going to be on yeah that's a really good question um I think I think again going back to that point I made before right there's so much information out there 
And um, particularly if you're in a B2B environment like like we are, where we're talking to dealers every day, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people out there in the industry. We're at events where there are thousands of people and we're hearing stories. We're hearing anecdotes. We're hearing things that are going on in the industry. We're hearing good stories. We're hearing bad stories. And so we were trying to communicate that previously through blogs by picking up on an issue and then writing a thousand words about it and trying to really dig into that issue. But what we did with the podcast was essentially Essentially, I spend in between each episode, I spend two weeks just keeping my ear to the ground. And I have a little, a little, very, very simple app on my phone. And every time I see or hear or read something that I think would be something that the listeners would like to know about, I just make a little note of it. Uh, and that is literally how I build up a very, very simple little agenda of the types of things that we can talk about. Um, each week. That, so that's the first thing is I'm, I'm a kind of an intelligence gatherer throughout the, the couple of weeks leading up to each podcast. In terms of how we construct the podcast, personally, I think we've still, we could still do a lot more with it, but we've settled on a very, very simple format. And that is that we have five. Hold, hold, yeah. Yeah. Hold that thought before you okay. get into format. Cause I do want to talk about format. The app you talk, you talked about, is that like a notes app, just a simple notes app? It is, yeah, okay. workflowing in so, my case. It's really simple. It's just somewhere to dump a note and go, oh, don't forget to, you know, mention that there was a new world record sent in, right. set in, you know, technology this week or whatever it is. I can tell you for a fact, and the, 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 the most successful radio people ever in Australia, Hamish and Andy, right? Now, I did some work with those guys. They, too, did exactly that, right? They carried their smartphones. They opened up the app, the Notes app, and every time something funny happened in their day-to-day lives... They would either take a photo of it, they'd record a voice memo, they'd type some little notes. So this is like, that's brilliant. Just always start that's to it. capture what's happening in and around your business life. Yeah, that's right. And, and again, coming back to the thing about stories, right, it's those little tiny things yes. where you go, oh, someone told me this story and it was just gold, right? And yep. and there's if you capture them at the moment, then you're not going to forget them, right? You can just you can then just relay that. And so yeah, I think that's a Got it. I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one doing it that way. I thought I was being lazy, but if you not know if all. superstars are doing it too, I feel a whole lot better. Tim Correct. Day. Okay, you're going to tell us about the format. So the format that we've settled on is that we have about five primary areas that we want to cover off consistently every week. Okay, so for example, we have a good news section. What's some good news that's happened in the solar industry in in the last fortnight? And let's let's share the good news. Let's let's give some examples of that every single week. Two or three very simple little stories about something great that we've heard that's out there. Our most popular segment, believe it or not, is crap solar. That's the that's the one that follows good solar where we talk about some of the bad things that are going on in the industry and what the industry is doing about that or tips for consumers to avoid getting ripped off or things for installers to be aware of around technological or regulatory issues so um uh so we have this little format and and so my job every two weeks is to plug the gaps in each of those five little areas that we want to cover each week so that gives us consistency can you just tell us what those that it's news crap solar what are the other three segments okay so we so we have a we have a sort of policy and industry overview wrap so the 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 macro level issues we always start with that so what's the big picture story that's usually sort of what's politics and whatever else richard stubbs did say to me actually lead with we'll lead with your best content i'm not sure you're leading with your best content when it comes to policy but hey you know your industry better than me okay what's (laughs) i'll I'll take that on board that's good feedback (laughs) yes what's um then we jump into solar technology news because a lot of our listeners are really really interested in the tech so what's what are two or three things that we've learned about technology and our industry moves at lightning pace timbo lightning pace so there's always a new product a new solution a new tech a new record that's been reached so that's the solar tech section then we move into good solar that's stories that we've heard that are good then we move into crap solar that's stories or or problems that we've heard that are bad and then because i'm an electric vehicle uh nerd tim um we wrap it up with um a a little two minute segment on some cool stuff about electric motorcycles in particular every week which is a funny thing to put in a solar podcast but what we know about our listeners tim is they love anything techie a lot of them are rev heads and electric motorcycles are such a quirky little area that people just love that because it's unusual. So it's a little hook to keep them right there till the end of the show. So big learning there is, again, because there'll be 
I want so many people who are listening to this to go off and create their own podcast and break through some of these limiting beliefs. You have got a simple format, five areas, five primary areas that you cover each week. So you know what you're working with. You've got this, you've got this blank template that you go in with. And then you look for news to put into it. So I love it. Okay, exactly, mate. format tick. Now, you've gone down the path of a co-host. You mentioned Giles. Um, yes. So I, I imagine Giles is some kind of English arist- aristocrat with a name like that <laughs> who, who dresses like Sherlock Holmes and has a pipe <laughs> hanging out his mouth. Um, Quite the opposite. <laughs> really? But, but I will. <laughs> I like the reference. <laughs> so um, you've gone down the co-host route. I love the co-host route. because I had a co-host, Luke, for the first 80 episodes of this show. Um, Luke is every and we're still great mates Luke is everything I'm not he was the mechanic he loved getting into the detail of things and I was sort of up here at the macro view and often we'd clash and it kind of made for interesting listening Um, indeed what about you and Giles it sounds like you're good mates so you can have a good yarn that's the key, mate. That is absolutely the key. And when we dived into this, we thought, geez, how's this going to work? And we mucked around with a bit of format. But very quickly, we realized that, um, and in fact, it was it was Giles's partner, who is also our producer. Um, and we kept sort of saying, oh, are we going okay? Is this working all right? And she looked at us and said, do you know what? It's like listening to you guys sitting at the pub, having a yarn and just spilling your guts, having a bit of a debate, challenging <laughs> each other. But you've got a shtick, right? You've got a relationship with each other that gives people a little chuckle. You're not trying to make yourselves out to be something that you're not. You're just simple, honest, having a conversation. And any anybody could be sitting around that bar listening into that conversation or joining into that conversation. So people feel comfortable. They feel like they know us. In fact, that's a common bit of feedback is – that we get is, wow, I feel like I'm having a chat with you every two weeks because I'm listening to the podcast and it is conversational. It's, it's unstructured. It's, it's ad libbed. We do it in one take. Um, and, and, but that, that relationship between us and the ability to read each other a little bit Mm -hmm. and remind each other of, of little bits and pieces that one of us might've forgotten because we're ad libbing. So we fill in the gaps for each other. We drive each other in different directions, but then we also pull each other back to make sure that we're sticking to our format. It's great, and you've, you've nailed it in terms of having that co-host strategy. Um, there are other strategies, of course. It could just be you, like this show is just me uh, and a guest. Um, you can get on. I, I love the soapbox podcasting strategy where you just get up on your soapbox and share an opinion once a week or once a day or once a fortnight. Um, yep. There's obviously answering listener questions. There's interview formats. There's all sorts, but certainly the co-host uh, one is working for you. And when you're getting that feedback, when people – and I get that too, is like, you know – Hey, Timbo, I feel like, do you mind if I call you Timbo? Well, hey, Timbo, I feel like I know you. That's what podcasting can do. It develops this personal relationship with your customers that you can't get from, you can't get that from running ads. Letterbox drops. You nailed it, mate. You nailed it. And, and, and that's where it works so well for us is because we've, we've created that sense that, you know, no matter where you are or who you are or whether you've actually met us or not, you know a bit about us and you know exactly what we're, where we're coming from. And, you know, um, you might not necessarily agree with us or you might not necessarily agree with one of us, but you're going to hear a reasonable debate. You're going to hear a balanced debate and you're going to hear from two guys that aren't there, you know, uh, shouting out like tall poppies. We're mm. just straight up guys having a chat about stuff that you can relate to. And I, and I think, uh, that and the fact that we constantly take the mickey out of each other Love it. Uh, works really well in our audience. Nige, do you do it face-to-face or over Skype or what, how do you actually put a show together? No, um, actually of the 40-odd episodes that we've done, we've only ever done one face-to-face, so we're always remote. Um, uh, Giles actually lives up on the north coast of New South Wales and is on the road a lot as a journalist. Um, I'm based here in Sydney. And so every Tuesday, Arvo, we have a booking in our calendar. I walk into the boardroom where I am now. Um, I set up my rig and I log on to a website. Giles logs on from the other end. Uh, we do our audio checks and in three or four minutes flat, we're up and running and recording. Can you see each other? No, we can't. That's interesting. Interesting. Mm. Well, that shows that that's a very strong relationship to, you know, be able to kind of bounce off each other without eyeballing each other, even, you know, over Skype. What, what, you, what are you using a software called? Cast. Cast. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a it's a nice little piece of software. Um, that's in that wasn't my choice. That was you know the expertise that we've got by having a great producer, and she's ex radio and TV. Um, that's Jaws's partner, and so she found this little app for us that works really really well. Um, there are a couple of other ones that we've tried, and sometimes we, we do have guests on occasionally, um, and we've used a number of other ones where we can you know record over a phone or or use other applications. But Cast is is really really lovely because it doesn't matter where anyone is what time zone there is they're in where they are in the world um they can just click this link open it up and then we can manage it through there so it's a really lovely simple um uh, way of 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 managing so just explain that just a little bit more so we can break through that kind of technical freak out that may some listeners might be having you go to cast you say okay i'm ready to i'm ready to cast yep you hit what do you do? Open up a session? Yeah, that's right. You you both log on to a session. Um, there's a, a sort of a, a texting box uh, in there, a little um, a little communications box in there where I then paste in the notes that I've um, collected over the over the last couple of weeks. So I paste that in so we can both see it on the screen. Um, you can do a little audio check and make sure the levels are good. And then when we're ready to go. Um, we hit the record button um, and we just run through our session. At the end of the session, you hit end recording and upload and it uploads it up and then it's linked back into our SoundCloud account where we store the files. Is it a SaaS service or free? I think in our case, we're actually using a free version. Um, you tight ass. But there, are a pay, there is a paid uh, version as well. Right. So talk to me about other hardware that you're using. Um, each of you, are you doing it on your phone? What's What kind of mic setup? Are you using headphones? Yeah, so th- that was a bit of an evolutionary thing as well. We started off using the regular kind of, you know, headsets that anyone would have laying around for their computer, um, and they were okay. Um, but um, after a few episodes, we had a few people saying, you know, you could do a bit with the audio, qu- audio quality and you-, you could really, you know, lift the listening experience. That's one of the lessons I learned, actually, Timbo, listening to podcasts is it might seem like a small thing, but if you've got a listener sitting there somewhere listening in, if if they if if you're having a grapple to listen because of poor audio quality or or poor levels or whatever it is, they're just going to tune out. That, that's what well, that's what happens. So you need to invest a little bit. And so we we started digging around, and I found a really simple little rig. It's made by a company called Focusrite. It's a little amp that you plug into your computer just through a USB port. I've got two inputs, so I can have a mic or two mics or a mic and, and some other device plugged in. Uh, it's got a really nice set of headphones and it comes with a really nice mic, which hopefully is working for the listeners today. Uh, that setup was under 400 bucks. Wow. And, and, and just a brilliant, simple little piece of kit. I grabbed one and gave it a, gave it a try. Um, and then in the end, I, um, I just put one, I bought another one and put it in a box and sent it to Giles and said, Giles, you've got to get onto this gear. So he's got one at his. That's awesome. Oh, again, I'll link to that in the show notes for this episode and um, remind people where they can find all that. So, you know, what we're learning here is that this is not that hard, is it? Like, oh, it's, you the, know, it's the opposite I, of I, I, I just so want to see more small business owners embrace podcasting. And it doesn't have to be prolific. I mean, you're putting out a show every fortnight. I'm putting out a show every week. There's others putting out a show every day. Mm-hmm. But again that could be that could be a deterrent for some it's like why well, i'm never going to find the time hopefully they're seeing that it doesn't take as long as they think it does but the other thing is just thinking about you know do a six part series do seasons that each season has six episodes or five episodes whatever it is you just set the expectation with your audience so that you know they know what to expect you know what to expect and and work on on it from then because it doesn't have to be this incredible you know, you don't have to be the slave to a podcast that you create. No, and 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 look, in, anyone on the net, and I've heard you talking about this uh, in your in in the show that we're doing at the moment. But you know, you've got to have content in any business on any website now. It's all about content, right? Whether it's blogs or mm. whether it's you know fresh content on your website, so you're getting good rankings. You got to have fresh content going up all the time, and there's there's work in that. There's no doubt about that. But it's it's just the new way that we do advertising and PR these days. So, you know, get on with it. Um, but 
one of the things that podcasting has done for me is that instead of having to try and come up with three or four blogs and you know getting it past our internal people and getting the brand story right and getting the word crafting right and all those kinds of things which is can be an investment um instead of doing that which can be hours and hours of work and a lot of lot of you know focus time on the computer all I'm doing, Tim, is flicking a few notes into my phone over a couple of weeks and then I sit down at 4 o'clock and by 4.30, the podcast is done and I walk away. It is the most time-efficient way to get a lot of stories and a lot of content out that I've ever used. It's amazing yeah. in that sense. So you then hand that on to Giles's wife, who I'm hoping also has a very aristocratic English name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you pass it on to her, she edits it, and uh, you walk away. You go, my job is done. I've created the content. Leave all the all the mechanical, technical stuff to someone else. Awesome. Exactly right. And we're, we're very lucky um, that we've we've got um, Giles' partner sitting in the background there with a lot of expertise um, around this. But having said that, you know, the way our show works, it's not the case for everyone, but because we don't want it to be a really complex, really, you know, long, heavily structured podcast, because it is really just about this conversation, it means that we, I think in almost every single case, maybe bar one, we have done it in a single 25-minute take, ad-libbed the whole way through and no editing except for an intro and an outro. And so the mm. the production time, the key to the success of our show and keeping our show simple and low cost has been just make it work and just go with it and, and you know, use a bit of stagecraft. If you make a blunder, don't stop yes. and collapse. Just keep rolling, you know, and we just do that and it keeps it real for people, which, again, cuts through to our audience. Now, let's cut to how you market each episode and where the starting by where the episodes live, which I think... F- it looks a little bit from confusing from my point of view for you. Your your episodes live on reneweconomy.com.au, which I'm guessing is Nigel's media blog site for the industry. Giles's, yes. <laughs> Nigel's, yes, that's right. That's right. Giles. Um, so reneweconomy.com.au, then forward slash podcast, then forward slash Solar the episode, Insiders. Yeah. Yeah, the episode. So... Um, quite elongated but I'm guessing what you're doing is then you're putting that link all over the place through all the other marketing touch points that you have the newsletters the EDMs the the ads the the you know the stands at expos all that type of stuff that's how you're getting it out there yeah you're exactly right and and um, Renew Economy has a huge following he has millions and millions of hits every month and so he's got wow. a newsletter that goes out on a daily basis and so when we record the podcast he'll have a little link as one of his newsletter stories that here's the latest podcast from Solar Insiders or Energy Insiders his other one and so we get an automatic bit of PR through that and he tends to want to drive them back in to his website so he wants the traffic in his website so he no he stores that soundcloud link up on there but of course when we promote it we can get a link from itunes um, we can get a link from soundcloud we get a link from renew economy we can get a link from all sorts of places so depending on you know what we think is gonna is gonna work for most listeners we can post the link up in any number of ways directing them to a number of sites mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of it depends on the um uh, the, the key i I think is you know, a lot of people have their favorite podcasting app that they'll use and so you know the key is once you get um, us installed on your favorite podcasting app then it's automatically updating every day and so you can have a notification so whether we reach them with advertising or not they're going to get a notification that says hey there's a lo- there's a new edition of solar insiders here ready for you to listen to right now well that's right and a lot of those podcasting apps and I like Pocket Cast which is an Australian app um, but look, they're all pulling from iTunes anyway so um, there is only about six places that you need to put your podcast and again I'll put a link to that in the show notes um, uh, you know things like iTunes Google Play Spotify yep. um, uh, Stitcher um, there's four um, because a lot of the a lot of those third party apps as I said just pulling from iTunes what's the where do you get the most traffic for your show Nigel that's a really good question, Timbo, and I'll be honest and say I don't know. Um, um, I've the, stumped him. I've stumped the podcast, yeah. nerd. <laughs> 
we, we I don't know. We we can see the stats, and and this is really more the domain of of, of Giles and his team at the other end because he mm. is the owner of the podcast. I'm only the co-host, yes. um, so they're doing more detailed and rigorous analysis than I am. Um, but but we can certainly see SoundCloud gives really good statistics on views and uh, or listens, I should say. Um, so we can see some stats through there. I can't see the iTunes stuff, unfortunately, because it's their account, so they can see them. Um, um, and we also can measure the traffic through his website and we can measure the clicks on links that we provide through our social media feeds. So we've got a little menagerie of of what we've got, but I think you're absolutely on the money, Tim. Um, the next step for us to go to the next level is really to spend a bit more time. Now that we've got the format down, we've got our listener base up, We've got a content that's working. We've got lots of feedback that's helped us fine tune that. The next step now for us, which we're about to undertake, is really let's let's stop for a minute. Let's dive back in. Let's really analyse all the data that we've got about where our listeners are coming from, how they're finding us, and then we can leverage that up. Yeah, love it. Uh, one of the things I love about the marketing of the Solar Insiders podcast is you've got some merch. <laughs> True. Who, who doesn't want merch, right? Oh, I think everyone I, wants I merch. I think I forced a T-shirt on you when I saw you last you week. You did. You did. <laughs> uh, that, that's amazing. I love it. Uh, you, you, so you've got T-shirts. What else you got? We've just stuck to T-shirts at the moment, and actually, and you're getting them done. Are you just getting them done at a local place? Are you going to Teespring, or where are you? Where are you doing that? Oh, look, we. Uh, I don't even know, Tim. Uh, we we had an idea <laughs> last year uh, for a, a big industry show that we did, and we actually did a live podcast as, a, as something unique. Um, we Love thought, you, let's do one at the show. We can talk about what's going on in the industry, but we can also have live listeners asking questions. Uh, so we gave that a run, which actually worked out really, really well. And we thought, well, how are we going to give someone, how are we going to spread the word a little bit more? And the marketing guys who were helping us with the show said, oh, that's easy. We're going to get a T-shirt made and we know exactly what we're going to put on it because the thing about radio or the thing about podcasting, um, the thing about audio is that, you know, who are the people? Who are you dealing with? You can't see them. You can't visualize them. So she said, we're going to put an image of you and Giles on the on the t- T-shirt to build the recognition of who you guys are. So it was all about putting a face to the voice, if you like. Yep. Um, and um, just real simple, we printed 100 of them out and we started giving them away. And um, now they're a little bit sought after, which is great. We're actually about to do a new run of them because we wow. we um, we had so many people. We had a big show last week and we had a constant stream of people coming up to the Solar Analytics booth where we yeah. had the T-shirts saying, hey, you know, we know one of your guys, Nigel, is involved in the podcast. We're a regular listener. Um, they told us we might be able to get a hold of a T-shirt. Where do we get one of those? And um, and before we knew it, we'd, we'd blown our whole inventory of T-shirts and we've now got people walking walking around promoting the show for us you're selling them no we're giving them away giving them away we're giving them away we thought about selling them and it was just too hard timbo uh it it was a very low cost marketing exercise for us um the solar analytics brand is on it of course so you know we can justify that as a marketing expense we we give t-shirts away promoting our business and and uh, uh all the time at these types of events we want people out there proudly spruiking our brand and our name and by making it more about the podcast but still with the connection to the brand and we took it away from being an advertisement about a product to being a story about this podcast that's revealing the secrets of the solar industry that just mm-hmm. happens to be by this great company who does monitor. Yeah, love it. Nige, I think you're onto something, buddy. Well done. It's lovely to speak to another uh, small business that's actually creating a podcast. Uh, we, hopefully, this show will inspire others to do the same. If it does, you know, we'd, we'd not both Nigel and I would love to hear what you choose to do in that regard. So uh, if people want to find, Nigel, your show, they go to reneweconomy.com.au. That's uh, it. If they want to go and buy some fancy solar <laughs> analytics panelling business for their home, go to solaranalytics.com.au. <laughs> and, buddy, I wish you all the best for your podcasting career. Well done. Oh, thanks so much, Timbo. It's been, a, it's been great to chat to you, and I've learned a bit too. So thanks for your feedback. We'll take that on board. Good on you. Thanks, Nigel. Thanks. Well, there you go, solar energy industry opinion leader and podcaster Nigel Morris. I hope you got a lot out of that, and I hope you're just a little bit closer to launching your own podcast. I'm encouraging you. I've got your back. I really, really want you to. You'll be amazed at what it does. 
I talk about that in my book, The Boomerang Effect. Go and buy it, smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. I'll also include a link to the various resources Nigel mentioned, including the kit that he records on. That'll be over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 458. Here's what grabbed my attention from that chat with Nigel, thanks to American Express. Attention grabber number one. I love how Nigel's created a simple format for each episode that covers the five key areas to talk about. That's going to make the planning of each episode so much easier and a great template basically for you to follow if you were to create a podcast, which you're going to, right? Attention grab it number two. I love the way Nigel constantly has his content radar on and capturing all the ideas on his smartphone. We talked about that two or three years ago in an episode I did with media personality Jules Lund. You know, he's got one of the top rating radio, had one of the top rating radio programs in Australia, taking over from Hamish and Andy. And the whole time he's going around life, just jotting things into his notes on his iPhone when something fun happens. And he's just constantly capturing content for upcoming episodes. Attention grabber number three. I love how Nigel's leveraging all his other marketing channels such as emails, merchandise, brochures and so on to promote the Solar Insiders podcast. I mean, the reality is your customers, your your potential listeners of your podcast may not be podcast listeners. They not, may not be, you know, podcast advocates, but that's why you've got to promote your show in other mediums and sort of bring it to their attention. That way they will become podcast advocates and we need more of them. That's what grabbed my attention. Would love to know what grabbed yours. Plus, you'll find all the resources mentioned over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 458. Well, that almost wraps up another episode of the award-winning Small Business Big Marketing Show. Thanks to our great mates at American Express. Be sure to search Amex Business to find out how your business expenses can reward you. And a big thanks to the guys at Amex for supporting the WOW segment. Uh, Getting great emails from you guys, hitting me up on Twitter, Facebook, and just saying how much you appreciate those segments uh, with old Simsy over there in the City of Angels. Next week, we catch up with James Chin Moody, the founder of Sendal, which is a highly disruptive parcel delivery service that I personally love. So I'm a little bit excited about that. And in the coming weeks, you and I will also meet a charcuterist. Yes, a charcuterist. And I did that interview uh, today, and the guy's awesome. You are going to love it. You want to hear about? You want to hear from a passionate business owner? with very deep opinions and principles around the way we should do business. You're going to love that chat. As well as a fellow who's cracked the molecular code, wait for this, for creating non-alcoholic spirits that taste exactly like alcoholic spirits. (laughs) That's good. (laughs) Guys, we do some fun interviews on this show. I do them for you. You know that, don't you? I do. There's also an entire back catalogue of interviews over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. If you love the show, please get out on the street now. Just run out wherever you are. Run up to the closest high street where all the shops are and just stand in the middle of the road. Just make sure there's no traffic and just yell out, hey, everyone, listen to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. It's really good. Until next week, I am Timbo Reid. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the absolute best marketing. Bye for now.